This is Advancing Your Business, Your People, and Your Legacy podcast, where we discuss all things that impact the growth, value, and sustainability of privately held businesses. This podcast is produced by the Rawls Group, Business Succession Planners, and I am Kendall Rawls, your moderator. In this series, focused on where are all the leaders, Ayesha Biscaro of the American Franchise Academy and Jeff Bannon of the Rawls Group will tackle unique challenges multi-unit franchisees face in recruiting, developing, and retaining top talent. This series covers a variety of discussion topics, so after you finish this installment, be sure to check back in to listen to the remainder of the conversation. Here we go. Moving on to focusing on the business owner, um, and I think this next question represents something that um, franchisees struggle with is, um, so Ayusha, in your opinion, how can franchisees move from the doer and manager and growing their portfolio while creating a culture of leadership for up and coming comers, for up and comers? Yeah, you know, um, I always say that there are two jumps in career that are the most difficult ones in the franchise world. And one is from being a regular team member with, you know, being a fellow team member to being promoted to being uh, an assistant manager or a manager within the same organization because people see you in a different way. And then the other one is to go from a, being a general manager of location, right? You own, you're the king of the castle, that's your location, you do, you do, you do, to then becoming a multi-unit uh, supervisor or owner, right? And so having, one thing is to do and another one is to have, inspire others to do. And so that's one of the things that uh, owners and uh, managers, if they want to continue to grow, one of the things that it is important that they understand is the difference between being the manager and being the leader and understanding that for you to be able to be the leader and be able to grow, you need to be able to master the skill of delegation and follow up. Uh, and, and that's going to be something that is very important and is very difficult for many because they're so used to being the one in charge, the one making the decisions, the one doing the action. And for and one of the key things that for, you know, to be able to grow is to be able to delegate uh, the responsibilities to other and to master the way of follow-up. That's one of the things that uh, I always say the magic is in the follow-up because you can delegate if you delegate properly, meaning training people, giving proper uh, job descriptions, expectations, uh, responsibilities, like clear as, as clear as possible, and then just giving them the empowerment and and then do the proper follow-up uh and that's when you do that and you're able to do that then you are able to then hand in the reins of the different units uh and businesses so that you can then focus more on the growth and the strategic plan for the company and so i think that's going to be one of the keys for to be able to uh grow and and when you do that you're also then giving and empowering and giving the people the ability to become leaders because you are giving them the ability to to take charge and so all of that for somebody that wants to grow uh their enterprise is going to be very important and it's very difficult for some you know and as long as they are aware and i think awareness is going to be is going to be key awareness of how that's something that they need to do and that awareness that is difficult for them and once they they have those two, they can start practicing doing that. And I think that's what's going to be key for anybody that wants to grow. And what about from your experience, Jeff? Um, well, I think this is, you know, the, the question being, um, you know, how, how do franchisees move from being the doer manager to growing and creating a culture of leadership for up and comers? I think, you know, before making the assumption that that's what they want to do, we have to start with a question is, is that what they want to do? Um, you know, because I know uh, lots of entrepreneurs love being their own boss. They love going out and making a deal, buying and selling, and just creating cash flow for themselves, at, you know, at their will. Whether it's just buying and selling units and, you know, creating a lifestyle for themselves, whatever that, whatever they want it to look like. Um, you know, obviously a decision to to move and grow um, and, and promote yourself, I call it a promotion from management to leadership. And that's essentially going from the CEO, managing a handful of stores and into a chairman type of role, overseeing, um, you know, another layer of management structure. 
uh, there's a lot to that. And inherent in that, as Aisha pointed out, is, is a lot of delegation. Um, and, and delegation is difficult <laughs> for many entrepreneurs simply because many of them carry an idea that I do this the best and therefore I'll do it. Um, and so that does become a, a difficult uh, process to, to grow into. Um, and, and delegation, obviously, in, you know, in its own right is, is challenging because it needs to be done in stages before you can fully trust someone to, um, you know, hand it off and walk away from them. Um, so, you know, I think that it, first it starts with their, their motivation, the owner's motivation perspective, and then it comes down into what is their strategic plan? What is the timeline? What do we want to grow to? And, and there's obviously a lot of very tough questions to answer through that process. Um, so, you know, if, if there isn't delegation or there isn't a clear, you know, uh, strategic plan for, for how to do it, um, obviously there's very limited growth opportunity in the organization and it comes back to the, the fundamental question, is that okay for the owner? Um, you know, and, and if it's not, and if it is an, an owner who does want to look at growing, just for the sake of growing and keep going, then they need to have a very realistic expectation of what that is going to look like. And having gone through the process quite a bit, I can tell you um, there's lots of difficult questions in that process. But um, uh, nonetheless, I think uh, it is a worthwhile endeavor for um, pretty much every one of the, the clients I've worked with to, to get there. So, um, you know, I, I think that, um, Creating that culture and vision and that strategic plan does open up lots of opportunities for leadership and comes back to the core of our discussion, which is how do we recruit and retain talent? Um, and so without the, the plan and the commitment to the growth and the delegation, uh, the answer is simply you, you, you're not going to retain much talent <laughs> or, or recruit much in. Advancing Your Business, Your People, and Your Legacy is produced by the Rawls Group and hosted by me, Kendall Rawls. Thank you to Ayesha Bascaro with the American Franchise Academy and Jeff Bannon, a succession planner with the Rawls Group, for their expertise and content contribution to this series. You can hear more of this discussion on the Rawls Group's website at www.rawlsgroup.com. Thanks so much. <laughs>